Alright guys, so we are back with another Final Fantasy VII Remake discussion video. I try to do these every now and then, that way it's not just about news and updates for the game, it's just us kind of talking about the game. So this time around I want to talk about data transferring and the game being released in multiple parts. We've done some videos like this, but this was like over a month ago, this is before E3, before we have all the knowledge we have now about the remake. These are both hot topics currently, a lot of people want their save data to transfer and a lot of people aren't happy with the remake being multiple games, which I find the second part kind of crazy because We've known since 2015 that it was going to be released in multiple parts, multiple games, episodic, whatever we thought at the time. We've known this for like four years now, going on five years by the time the game actually comes out. Like, this has been known since the remake has been a thing, but for some reason, it's a hot topic currently. And just because it's older information doesn't mean you guys can't have your thoughts or opinions on it, of course, but I'm just pointing out, like, we've known about this for years. Like, where was the uproar for the past four years, you know? So I suppose we'll start with that. A lot of people are upset that the story of Final Fantasy VII is going to be broken down into multiple games for the remake. And I can kind of understand that. I'd love to play the entire story of FF7 if I could with the remake, but again, if we've known since the game was revealed in 2015 that it was never going to be the entire experience with one game. So it seems like a weird thing to be upset about now, because if you're upset about it, then you clearly weren't following this game the entire time. And when it comes to the story of FF7 being broken up into multiple games, a lot of people out there think that Square Enix is being greedy by doing this, by releasing multiple $60 games. But for one, it's not like they have the other games already developed, right? It's not like they have the second game already made right now, and they could include it with the first one, but they're just not going to. They're going to sell it separately. They haven't even started developing the second one yet. They're still finishing up the first one, and they're just now conceptualizing the second game. Like On top of all this, while this may be the first game in probably a trilogy, and it might be set in Midgar only, it's not like you're not getting a full gaming experience. The game is the size of any other Final Fantasy you've ever played. People are looking at the idea of the game being Midgar only, comparing it to the original game where that was like 5 to 7 hours of content, and thinking, wow, that's going to be a boring game. Completely ignoring the fact that everything that happens in Midgar is going to be completely expanded with the remake. You're going to have so much new stuff to do, side content, side quest, character development, potentially the entire city of Midgar to explore, which we explored not even half of it in the original game. I mean, the game is so big, it's requiring two Blu-ray discs to play. Whether this is two playable discs or just an installed disc and a playable disc, we do not know currently. But the point is, two Blu-ray discs of content, yet somehow people still feel like they're getting ripped off. And look how long it's taken them to develop this first game, which is set in one single location from FF7. It's Midgar only, and it's taken them four or five years to develop the game, and it's requiring two Blu-ray discs. I don't know about you, but as a fan of Final Fantasy VII, this absolutely excites me. This is one of my main requests when I've talked about what I want from this game, is for Midgard to be a massive city that we can explore, and we're getting that. That's exactly what I wanted, what a lot of other people out there wanted. And think about it like this, Midgar is broken up into 8 sectors above and below the plate, so there should theoretically be 16 distinct areas to explore. How can that not excite you, man? As a fan of Final Fantasy VII, how can you not want to explore every single sector of Midgar? That's one of the things I'm most anticipating with this first entry in FF7 Remake, is being able to explore all of Midgar, potentially. That excites me, man, because, we, like I said, we barely got to touch Midgar in the first game. We get a couple of sectors above the plate, a couple of sectors below the plate, and we didn't really get to explore them because the game was super linear, obviously. And also keep this in mind, with the game being Midgar only, that means with the next entry, the second entry, and potentially the third entry, if there is a third, they can focus on making a badass overworld or open world for us to explore. If this first game included some sort of overworld aspect to it, then Midgar and the overworld would have suffered because of it. But with the entire first game being set inside the Midgar segment, that allows the second game to focus on the open world, the overworld, which is what everybody wants from this game. And to be honest, them releasing Final Fantasy VII Remake as multiple full-size games is the ultimate fan service because they're allowing us to play the game as soon as possible, Otherwise, we'd have to sit here and wait until the entire story is done, which is not going to be for another five or six years, potentially. Maybe even longer than that. And even if they waited until the entire series of games is done, you still couldn't buy that experience for $60. You're talking about however many years of development and millions of dollars it's taken just for this first game. Now, double that or triple that, however many games there's going to be, they're still standalone full-size games that cost $60 a piece. Even if you waited until all the games were done and finished developing and released, you'd still have to pay $60 however many times. I'd rather pay $60 now, wait two or three years, pay another $60, wait two or three years, pay another $60, instead of paying like $180 or $240 at one time. That's ridiculous. And look at it like this. People are upset about having to spend $60 multiple times, but you have people out here that are buying the first class edition of this first game, which costs $330 plus tax. They could sell five separate $60 games and that would still cost less than this one version of the game. That's something you should be mad about. And to kind of wrap up this segment of the video, for those that are still upset about having to spend $60 multiple times, think about whatever your favorite AAA series is. Whenever another game comes out in that series, 
Are you going to be upset that it costs $60? No, because that's the normal price of a full-size, brand-new AAA game. There's nothing different here, man. These are full-size games that they're releasing. Yes, it's the story of FF7 broken down into multiple games, but they're still full-size games, full gaming experiences from beginning to end, like any other game you'd play out there. There's literally no difference. If you're expecting to get the entire story of FF7 in a remake for $60, you clearly have not been paying attention to this game over the past four years. Now, when it comes to data or saves transferring between games, I think it's pretty safe to say that that's probably not going to happen. Again, these are full-size standalone games. People are expecting to go from game one to game two with the exact same levels, gear, materia, etc., etc., and that just doesn't seem feasible, right? Like, you didn't go from 13 to 13-2 at the exact same level with all the gear. No, you started back at level one and you level back up, like you do with any other game with any other sequel. Now, it's an absolute possibility that we could transfer weapons, armor, materia, and maybe even choices that we make in the first game. We know there's going to be dialogue choices that change certain stuff. We don't know how impactful it's going to be, but maybe there, if there are some impactful choices, maybe that carries over from game one to game two. As for weapons, armor, and materia carrying over from one game to another, that's a possibility, but if that does happen, it'll ruin your experience because when it comes to FF7, at least the original game, there weren't level requirements for anything. And if that's the same case with the remakes, then you would start game two with all your weapons and armor from the original game. You're going to be pretty much invincible. Like, you're going to have this in-game armor from the first game that's going to make pretty much no damage happen to you. You're going to have the last, you know, final weapons you had from the original game at the very beginning of the second game against these low-level enemies. You're just going to walk through the entire second game. That sounds fucking boring to me. Why would you want that? Again, these are standalone games, so you're supposed to theoretically go from level 1 to 99 if you want to with each installment. So that means with the second game... You're going to start at a low level with low level enemies. So if you could transfer stuff between games, why would you want to start game two at level 65 with max materia, high level weapons and armor with like thousands of HP? Like this is just going to ruin your experience. Why would you want that? You're not even going to have a challenge until the end of the second game. Maybe they could add the option for those that want to do it, but me personally, I wouldn't use it. I want to enjoy my experience with the second game. I want to not feel like I'm wasting my $60 because if you're just walking through the second game, that's a waste of your purchase. Now, we'll agree from a narrative perspective, it doesn't really make sense for us to start over with each game. Because the last time we use these characters, we're escaping from Midgar with these really strong weapons and armor and materia and stats. And then for whatever reason, when we go to Calm, everybody just ditches all their gear. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And while I am okay with the story being split up into multiple full-size games, I can agree with everybody that they need to convey info better. They don't even know right now how long it's going to take to make the second game or when the second game is going to come out. And that's a problem. Expecting people to get invested into the FF7 remake games, but not even knowing when the next part's going to come out, or even how many parts there's going to be, that's a major problem, man, and I can see why people are turned off by that. But me personally, you know, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII, the exact same game, off and on throughout my entire life. Nothing changes. Every time I fire it up, it's going to be the exact same game, and I've played it I don't know how many times. So, to be honest, I'll probably just play the first FF7 remake game multiple times until the second part comes out and then i'll play that one multiple times until the third part comes out so i'm fine with the wait between games to be honest that being said obviously i don't want to wait another five years for the second game to come out which they've said that because of the development the work they've done on the first game development should go a lot smoother for the other games so it should come out sooner than this one did so you know two three four years or something like that Anyways, my dudes, that's pretty much the video. I want to talk about these two things specifically at length in a video. I've seen people discussing it in the comments of my last upload. This video by no means is trying to change your mind. You're allowed to dislike this game for being multiple parts. If data doesn't transfer, you're allowed to be mad about that. You're allowed to be mad if having to spend $60 multiple times. Absolutely. But the point of the video is I wanted to address some concerns a lot of people had recently and kind of give my personal thoughts on it. Anyways, my dudes, that's the video. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, what are your thoughts on having to spend $60 multiple times, what are your thoughts on data transferring, do you think it will, do you think it won't, I, I don't think it will, but that doesn't mean I'm right, like I don't know any more than you guys know currently, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with that, maybe they don't even know, because they're just now conceptualizing the second game, so there's a very good chance that if the fan demand's high enough, data could transfer, I hope it's an option, I hope it's not forced or mandatory, because I don't want to start at level 65 or whatever with the second game, I want to start at level 1 if I can. But that's my personal opinion. I pass it off to you guys in the comments section. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And want to stay up to date with more Final Fantasy VII Remake content, turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter at TheDashingDavid. And my Discord links to my social networks are in the description. And in the outro. Later, guys.